Hi friends! Today we'll be making this oversized off-shoulder Valentine's sweater dress. Valentine's Day is just around the corner and I also wanted to bring in some springy colors. So I decided to make this plant pooling sweater dress to mark the occasion. Now if you've never done pooling before, I have a step-by-step -step video tutorial which I'll place a link in the description box below to guide you through any plant pooling project. Now let's get started. I am using the Karen Jumbo Variegated Pulling Yarn in the color Rosewood. We'll need a 5.5mm hook, some stitch markers, a pair of scissors, a measuring tape, and a tapestry needle. With your 5.5mm hook, we'll pick up our yarn and work a slip knot. You can start at any color, but for reference, I'm starting off on the pink yarn. This pattern comes in 9 sizes, but only 3 lengths. So for size medium, I'll be working up a total of 79 chains. Once you've completed 79 chains, you want to make sure that you start your next row on a new color. So go ahead and continue to work up your chains until you reach the next color sequence. In my case, I need to add an additional 3 more chains to reach my next color which is pink. On the second chain from your hook, we'll insert our hook and work a single crochet. So you'll drop a loop and pull through two. In order for this plant pulling to work, we'll need to count each color sequence. So here I have three stitches of the color pink. Next will be my maroon color. So this is my second, third, and fourth stitch. So I have four maroon color stitches. The next color is pink, which I have three stitches. Next, we have green. I have two, three stitches. Next, we have white, one, two, three, and four. And our last color sequence would be green. So here I have one, two, and three. Now to be sure that the number of stitches that we made earlier is consistent, we'll continue to count the next set of colors and to ensure that the number of stitches are exactly the same as what we did earlier. Now let's have a look at our color sequence. Every pulling yarn is different and some may have more colors and some may have less. Here I have a total of six colors that makes up one cycle. And the reason why each color stitch matters is because it'll help us determine the argyle pattern that we want to work with. This is the pattern that we're aiming for. So go ahead and single crochet across for a total of seven nine stitches and I'll meet you back here once we're there. On your last stitch, because we worked an extra three chains, we will just leave these extra chains unworked. So go ahead and chain one to turn, making sure to tighten it slightly so that that turning chain does not eat into our stitch count. We insert a hook to that first stitch and work that first single crochet stitch. And continue to count each stitch per color as you go. Now for this row and for the rest of the rows, we will be working single crochet stitches on each stitch across all the way until we've reached our desired width. For size M, I'm working a total of 73 rows. Once you've worked up each row, it's best to constantly refer back to the pattern template to ensure that our color sequence is correct. So here I've just finished my second row and I want to show you that every time I complete a row, I'll refer back to the pattern template by looking at each beginning stitch. Here I have two greens and three pinks and four maroon stitches and it should match exactly the same as this template here. 
This is how your finished body panel should look like. And on your last stitch, leave a long tail enough to seam the shoulders. And now that you know the pattern already, go ahead and make a second piece. Once you've completed your second panel, place both pieces together like this with one tail on this side and the other tail on the other side. Now before seaming the shoulders, minus off approximately 9 to 12 inches or 23 to 30 centimeters off for your neckline and place a stitch marker on both ends. We'll take our hook and pick up our loop. Now insert your hook through the first post on both panels and work a single crochet. You'll continue to single crochet both pieces together all the way across until you reach the first stitch marker. Once you've reached the stitch marker, just chain one to secure and bind off. Now go ahead and work on the other side. Once you've completed seaming the shoulders, we'll now proceed to seaming the sides. Place a stitch marker where the armhole should end. For size M, I'm placing it 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters from the top. Now you'll do the same on the other side as well. We'll turn our work to the side. Here you can see my unworked chains, which we did earlier. You can go ahead and undo the chains or seam around it, whichever you prefer. Insert your hook through both pieces together, just like how we did on the shoulder side. I'll drop a loop. And I'll place my unworked chain or whatever excess tail that you have in the center. I'll chain one to secure and I'll proceed to single crochet around it on each stitch. Do this across until you reach the first stitch marker. Here I've just reached my stitch marker and I'm working on my last stitch. On your last stitch, you'll just chain one to secure, bind off, and we'll repeat the same steps again on the other side. Once we've completed seaming all the sides, this is how it should look like on the wrong side. And now we'll turn our work inside out. And we'll be working on the edging. We'll first start working around the neckline. So you'll turn to the seam side and insert your hook. We'll be working on the petal stitch. I really like this stitch a lot because it has a little poofy finish to it. So we'll drop a loop, chain one to secure. Now on that first stitch, we'll work one half double crochet. On the next stitch, we'll yarn over, insert our hook, drop a loop. We we'll have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, we'll skip the next stitch, work on the following stitch. Yarn over, drop a loop. Yarn over and pull through all five loops. And that is your first petal stitch. So on the next stitch, we'll yarn over, we'll insert a hook through that skip stitch earlier, drop a loop. Yarn over, we'll skip the next stitch and proceed to work on the following stitch. Yarn over and pull through all five loops. So this is just like working a half double crochet two together, but instead of working on the first and second stitch, we will be working on the first and third stitch, and then we'll go back to the second and fourth stitch and so on and so forth. Now let's do it together one more time. We'll go back to the previous stitch, yarn over, insert a hook, drop a loop, skip the next stitch, yarn over, drop a loop and pull through all five loops. 
Now you'll be able to see that really pretty poofy slanty kind of stitch and we'll do this all around the neckline in the round and I'll meet you back here to close. Once you've worked in the round and you have one stitch left, we'll continue working one petal stitch into that last stitch, pull through all five loops, and then we'll slip stitch onto the first stitch that we did earlier to close. Chain one to secure and bind off. And this is your finished color. And now that you know this pattern already, we'll go ahead and work on the sleeves using the exact same pattern. Now let's just do this first bit together. We'll insert a hook, preferably along the seams. We'll draw up a loop. Chain one to secure. On that first stitch, we'll work one half double crochet. On the next stitch, We'll yarn over, insert a hook, drop a loop, yarn over, skip one, insert your hook, drop a loop, pull through five. Yarn over, go back to the skip stitch, drop a loop, yarn over, skip stitch, drop a loop, pull through five. We'll continue working the petal stitch in the round and I'll meet you back here to join. When we have one stitch left, we'll work that last petal stitch. And we'll slip stitch onto the first stitch to join, chain one to secure and bind off. Now repeat the same steps again on the other side. Once you've completed both sleeves, we'll turn our work upside down and we'll work the same petal stitch again on the bottom edging. And since you know this pattern already, I'll go ahead and work on the first row and I'll meet you back here to start on the second row. So I've just completed my first row and I'll slip stitch to my first stitch to join. Now we're working on the second row. So I'll immediately work one half double crochet on that first stitch, yarn over, insert your hook through the second stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, skip the next stitch and work a petal stitch just like before. So this is exactly the same as how we worked on the row side. So go ahead and work your petal stitch in the round and I'll meet you back here to close. Here, I've just worked my way in the round. Now I'll slip stitch onto the first stitch to close, chain one to secure and bind off. And we're done. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Look at that pretty petal stitch. If you made it this far, great job. And I hope you've enjoyed making this pretty off shoulder sweater as much as I have. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, you're just one click away for more fun tutorials like this. Give me a thumbs up once you do. And I'll see you guys real soon. Bye for now.